juggernaut. Introducing Lynx from Atari, the color video game you can get away with. Well, sometimes. Where did Tobey Maguire stick that power supply, huh? <laughs> Welcome to my top 25 Atari Lynx games. Uh, my rules are simple for this list. One, no homebrew, it's got to be a retail release. Two, it must still be fun to play today. The video looks a bit blocky, and that's because the Atari Lynx had a 160 by 102 resolution so it was very low and blowing it up to 1080p makes it look a bit janky it looks a lot better on the actual atari links so please bear that in mind while you enjoy my top 25 atari links games number 25 gauntlet the third encounter I've been a fan of all of the Gauntlet games, and this one really upped the ante. It's much better than the home conversion ports of Gauntlet 3. This one has a true Gauntlet feel, but with RPG elements, multiple characters to choose from, neat little mode 7 effects with the, the ghosts and the viewfinder at the bottom, and it's just really enjoyable. 24. Road Blasters. Road Blasters is a very rare thing, it's a handheld version of a game that fully encapsulates the visual style and the speed of an arcade version. Um, the Lynx port of Road Blasters is exceptional, graphics are fantastic, the gameplay is all there, all the levels are there, the control is there and it runs at a blistering 60 frames a second, it's well worth checking out. 23. Blue Lightning. Blue Lightning was a launch game for the Atari Lynx and it really showed off these Mode 7 style graphics that were absolutely mind blowing at the time. Yeah, it's an obvious ripoff of Afterburner but that's not necessarily a bad thing because Afterburner is one of my favourite games of all time and this is different enough to be thoroughly enjoyable and to stand up on its own. 22. Rygar Rygar harks back to the very simple arcade times. It's just you, a bunch of enemies, running to the right, jumping, avoiding obstacles, and having a heck of a lot of fun along the way. Um, the graphics are really crisp, and they really show up on that low resolution screen of the links. The, uh, the power-ups are interesting. Um, it's got a charm to it as well. The graphics and the way it feels just entices you to play more, even though it is a really simple game. 21. Toki. I never played the arcade game, but I did have the Amiga home conversion of this, and it was a, a really interesting game. The, the platforming was great, it had a high difficulty spike, uh, really, really interesting uh, gameplay mechanics and graphical style, and the Lynx version was more colourful, had tighter controls, and was more enjoyable than the Amiga version I was used to. So it's an excellent game. 20. Dracula the Undead I think out of all the games on this list that Dracula the Undead is probably the one that pushes the links to its limits in terms of its scale and scope. Um, Dracula the Undead was going to be a 512k game uh, they had to cut it down considerably to fit it on a 256k cartridge um, and you look at it and you can see why the graphics are astounding, the locations are detailed and crisp the mode 7 star scaling effects, the, the storyline, everything was really, really, really well put together. And if you're a fan of point and click games, then this is an absolute must have. Number 19. Raiden. I love my shmups, and Raiden is one of the greatest on the links. Um, okay, there aren't many to choose from and it's by no means arcade perfect, but it's got it where it counts. The gameplay is really tight, the control is crisp, it uses full use of the widescreen on the Atari Lynx invert mode so that you get a nice long wide display just like the arcade game had. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just great fun. It's simplistic, uh, but it does everything you need. It ticks all the boxes for me, and therefore that's why it's in my top 25.
Number 18, Ninja Gaiden. Ninja Gaiden, which was also known as Shadow Warrior around my neck of the woods due to the UK's ridiculous anti-ninja uh, tirade in the early 90s, was a great arcade game, um, really impressive visually. Uh, the Atari Lynx version encapsulated that perfectly in the handheld. It's one of the best conversions of the game across any system. It beats the home computer ports, it beats, uh, beats most ports really. The gameplay is really solid, the controls are, well they take a little bit of getting used to with the jumps on certain bits of the, uh, the level, but once you get the hang of it, this is a really rewarding and enjoyable game. Number 17, Clax. Yeah, I got a bad case of the Clax. Uh, Clax was a excellent arcade game, uh, very similar to Tetris in the way that it was just pure heroin in cartridge form. Um, the, the idea is simple, you've just got to make a row of three of the same coloured block to make them disappear off the board and stop your blocks from hitting the top of the drop meter. Devilishly simple. The concept is timeless. The gameplay is timeless. It uses full use of the Lynx's widescreen in vertical format. And Clax is definitely worth flipping your Lynx for. Number 16, Hydra. I don't get it. Hydra seems to be hated by everybody who isn't me. Um, personally, I love the arcade game, I love the Amiga home conversion, and I love the Atari Lynx Portable Edition. It, it's just a great fun game. Okay, it may not set the world alight, but what it does, it does absolutely brilliantly. It gives you a tight, tense arcade feel, brilliant control, there's enough action to keep you busy on the train ride home. It, it's, it's a perfect handheld game. It looks great. Plays great, absolutely worth checking out, and it's cheap. Number 15, APB All Points Bulletin. APB is yet another classic Atari arcade conversion. The original game came out in 1987, and it's still fun to play, and this is a great rendition of it. They've really utilised the Lynx's screen. You've got big, bright, crisp visuals. All of the, the comedy and the humour has been left intact. The controls are a little twitchy, and they take a bit of getting used to, as you can see by me crashing into everything on this video. But, yeah, once you get the hang of things, once you've got the controls down again, it's still really fun to play in short bursts and for longer periods of time. Number 14, California Games. California Games is one of the earlier Lynx titles and it was a flagship game. Uh, in fact, I believe it was bundled with a couple of the original systems. Um, it's a lovely game to look at. The graphics were big, they were bright, they were bold. They were much better than the home conversions of the same game at the time. Unfortunately, the Atari Lynx version has missed out a couple of the events that were visible in the home computer ports. But the events that are there are much better designed, um, much better to control. Uh, it's just a great fun game that you can play in small doses, or you can play competitively with your friends, passing the links around to one another. It's just, it's just really good fun. Number 13, STUN Runner. What a showcase this is for the Atari Lynx. It took an arcade game which was so technologically advanced that no other system could do an accurate representation of it. And then using the Mode 7 style graphics of the Atari Lynx, they just created this bombastic sprite-based version of the game. Uh, all of the arcade elements are in there. The graphics look pretty damn good, really, for an Atari Lynx. They look really sharp, and the sprites are well designed. The gameplay's there, the speed's all there, and it is a really good conversion. In fact, it's a fantastic conversion when you consider the hardware that the game is running on. Yeah, it's a really good game. Absolutely worth checking out. Number 12, Battle Wheels. Are you a fan of Battlezone? Are you a fan of the Death Race 2000 movie? Are you a fan of running people over and blowing cars up? Then Battle Wheels will tick all the boxes for you. It's a great vehicular combat style Battlezone clone uh, that uses the Mode 7 style sprite scaling of the Atari Lynx. It's got frenetic gameplay, it's got tight controls, 
The sound's nothing to shout home about, but the gameplay more than makes up for that. You can get out of your car if you want a challenge and just go Mano versus Machino and just, uh, yeah, blow everything up in sight. Very simple gameplay, but it's it's just great fun. Number 11, Paperboy. Now, you might be spotting a pattern here with the Atari Lynx games. Almost all of the great Atari Lynx games are ports of Atari classic arcade games. And Paperboy has always been one of my favourites. Um, it's been in my top list for the Game Boy. It's going to be in top lists that come in the future. I love Paperboy. It's so unique and it's so original. It's so much fun to play. There's always something new to learn and there's always something to enjoy. You can play it for five minutes or you can play it for an hour. It's just, it's just a timeless classic that was really perfectly ported down for a handheld. It's, it seems to be designed for a handheld, really. Number 10, Xenophobe. I never got to experience the arcade version in an actual arcade when I grew up. I only got to play it as an adult via emulation. I was used to Xenophobe on the Commodore Amiga, and this version of Xenophobe on the Atari Lynx is actually better looking, has better control, and has more features than the version that I grew up knowing and loving. Um, Xenophobe on the Atari Lynx is an absolute joy to play. It's got all of the humour, it's got all of the action, it's a very simplistic game, but it's enjoyable, it doesn't get boring, you can keep playing it and playing it and playing it. And I recommend you check it out, I really do, it's a fantastic title. Number 9 Steel Talons. The Atari Lynx version of this is absolutely stunning. To be perfectly honest with you, the first time that I ever plugged this in and turned it on, I was expecting a disaster because I'd played the 16-bit Mega Drive or Genesis version of this first and, and that was just an absolute mess. So if a Mega Drive couldn't run it, what chance did an Atari Lynx have? Well, it turns out that it has a bloody good chance of running it pretty damn well. Um, the frame rate's a bit low, but the graphics are superb for an Atari Lynx. The gameplay of this game is still there in buckets from the original. Um, all of the objective-based gameplay is there, from blowing up ground installations to airborne combat to flying through canyons, night cycles, day cycles, weather cycles, it's all there. And it's all crammed into this tiny little Atari Lynx cartridge. It's, it's a sight to behold, and it's a glorious game. Number 8, Desert Strike. The Atari Lynx version of this is absolutely stunning. To be perfectly honest with you, the first time that I ever plugged this in and turned it on, I was expecting a disaster because I'd played the 16-bit Mega Drive or Genesis version of this first. What chance did an Atari Lynx have of running Desert Strike? Well, it turns out that it has a bloody good chance of running it pretty damn well. The graphics are superb for an Atari Lynx. The gameplay of this game is still there in buckets from the original. Um, all of the objective-based gameplay is there, from blowing up ground installations to airborne combat. It's all there, and it's all crammed into this tiny little Atari Lynx cartridge. It's, it's a sight to behold, and it's a glorious game. Desert Strike is an absolutely essential purchase for any Atari Lynx owner. Number 7, Rampage. Rampage is just pure, unadulterated fun. The story is pretty much non-existent. A couple of professors take a potion, they turn into giant monsters and blow the crap out of cities around the US. It doesn't matter. All that matters is you get to smash the living crap out of everything. Absolutely everything. Buildings, helicopters, uh, the army come and take you out and you can smash tanks under your feet. You see a woman in a bathtub as you smash the building, you can pick her up and you can eat her for extra health. It's just great fun. I love this game, I've always loved it. It's an absolute must play. Number 6, Zybots. 
Zybots is a game I've learned to appreciate more as I get older. At first it seems like just a simple maze game shooter, but when you think about it, it's one of the originators of the first and third person genres. Um, when you look at the game and the way it plays, it's very tight quarters action, it's very visceral. Um, I also like the fact that there's no HUD on the screen. You see the little grey dot on the back of the player? Well, that's actually his health meter, and that starts flashing when he's low on health. There are some brilliant design choices in Zybots, and it all works for an amazing game. There are power-ups that you can collect that you can spend money on in the shop uh, to give you extra health, can give you a map, can give you all these extra bits and pieces. The pure core gameplay is just extremely enjoyable and satisfying. Number 5. Rampart Rampart's an interesting take on the puzzle genre. It may not look like a puzzle game at first, but it certainly plays like one, or at least part of it does. The idea of Rampart's is you select a castle to defend, you build it up, you fortify it, and you add cannons to the top of it. And then you use those cannons to obliterate the oncoming enemy pirates in their boats. Every round, uh, the enemy pirates will fire cannons at you and try and destroy your fortifications. And after you've destroyed a single wave of pirates, you get certain blocks and bricks and a set amount of time to rebuild your castle walls. If, you, if your castle walls are breached and there is a hole in anywhere around the surroundings, they can overtake your castle and win the game. But if you're good, you can extend your castle to other forts around the map and you can build on the, the actual size of your castle and the amounts of cannons that you can put on top of it. It's a really great game, really interesting, very original and very, very enjoyable. It's absolutely worth playing through. Number 4, Battlezone 2000. This cartridge is very special for uh, several reasons. The first off, Battlezone is one of my favourite arcade games and this is an extremely good rendition of the arcade game. It's actually added a few extra bits, it, you could think of it as a Battlezone Plus, but the thing that makes this the most important cartridge in the Atari Lynx's library is the fact that there is another version of Battlezone hidden away. Uh, the developers were working hard on a fully developed new revamp of Battlezone where you could create your own tanks, uh, travel several different planets, each, each with their own ecosystems. Um, it was designed to be this massive sprawling game and it was cancelled because it was deemed too complex. The developers actually left the game inside the cartridge and you can unlock it with a cheat code which I will put in the description below. This is 100% an absolute essential purchase. Number 3. Todd's Adventures in Slime World Probably one of the first Metroidvania style games to ever grace a console. Uh, Todd's Adventures in Slime World may not be much to look at, but it is just a life-sucking experience and I mean that in a very good way it's so good that your life just disappears because all that you want to do is play this game it sucked me in for hours even recording the footage I was supposed to play it for a couple of minutes just to get a few uh, few enemies on screen a few items and I ended up playing it for about two and a half hours the big thing with Todd's Adventures in Slime World, which unfortunately I can't demonstrate on this video, is you can have eight player link up on this. You can explore together, or you can attack each other, and single player's fun, but man, eight player multi on this game is a riot. Number two, Chips Challenge. This is a lot of people's number one choice, and it's easy to understand why. Uh, Chips Challenge was a Atari Lynx exclusive game that was later so popular that it was released on pretty much every home computer known to man. 
Um, it was released in Microsoft's Entertainment Pack, and it's still enjoyable to this day on Steam as well as the Atari Lynx itself. The graphics are awful, the sound is garbage, but it doesn't matter because Chips Challenge has it where it counts. It has gameplay in bucket loads. It's it's just a wonderfully designed puzzle game. The challenge starts off fairly simply and then it just ramps up to devilishly devious puzzles and it just hooks you. You've got infinite lives, infinite tries, it's just you against the clock and it's absolutely incredible. It's a wonderful title with some wonderful design elements and it stood the test of time still enjoyable to this day and for many people Chips Challenge has become synonymous with the Atari Lynx. Before I reveal my number one Atari Lynx game of all time, let's see a few games that didn't quite make the list. So here we are, my number one Atari Lynx game of all time. It's a perfectly realised port of a 1982 arcade classic that seems like it was born for the handheld. It is, of course, Robotron 2084. Now, Robotron is a twin-stick shooter released in the arcade by Midway in 1982, and it was ported to the Atari Lynx um, with a very clever mechanic. Basically, they made the character automatically fire, and you use your two action buttons to rotate the character left and right, while still, you know, manoeuvring with the D-pad. Um, very simple controls, perfectly adapted for a handheld game and it works fantastically. The small resolution of the screen doesn't really make any difference. Um, the characters are still crisp, they're clear, the sound is arcade perfect, the gameplay is arcade perfect, and you can sit down and play this for 10 minutes or you can sit down and play this for three hours. It's just one of those games that makes time just fall away whenever you play it. So that's why it's my number one Atari Lynx game of all time. Please check it out. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you do, please like, comment and subscribe, and feel free to check out my other videos too. If you have a suggestion of what system I could feature next, or if you have some constructive feedback on how I can improve my video, please get in touch. I'm new to this video editing thing, um, and I try to improve each and every video I make, so your feedback could really help me out. Thank you for watching my top 25 Atari Lynx games of all time. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.